Hey, good morning. This is May Valensky with Driving Markets. I hope you're well. Okay, so today I want to focus on a couple of two types of trading. There's day trading and there's swing trading. What's the difference? Quite simple. A day trader comes in and wants to actually make money on the day. Very, very high risk at the moment, simply because the markets are range bound. So what day trader does, he looks at analysis and looks at the financials and takes the graphs and says, where can he quick get, grab a quick opportunity to day trade? That is great on things like FX and things like cryptos, those particular assets that are moving quite quickly. A swing trader. He looks at the overall move, what's likely to happen over two or three days. Now, that's more of my favor. I'm more in favor of swing trading than I am of day trading at the moment. So if a day trading goes well for you on that particular day, great. However, swing trading, especially in this market where the market's range bound, remember, it's floating up reaches a high and then comes down again. So if you're monitoring that particular move, that particular float between the lower levels and the high levels, then you are going to actually make a swing trade over a two, three or four day period. What's happening at the moment, if you look at the financials, FX and cryptos, they're moving within that range that allows you to trade at the top where they're going short or trade at the bottom and going long. And therefore you can pick up within that range quite a lot of profit so probably move on to swing trading and you probably have more success in this particular market until we go for a breakout the breakout could either be upwards unlikely in my opinion but it could move upwards however more likely it's to move break out downwards and if it starts breaking out downwards and starts testing the 200 moving day average on shares or the 50 day moving average on fx or cryptos, then you're going to have a further downtrend. And if you're on a swing trade, what you want to do is you want to capitalize on that particular trade and either run it or add to it as it goes on. Because once you start catching that particular wave, then you can make significant amounts of money. If we're going to focus and look into FX, let's look into FX and a couple of assets. For example, you've got the um, Aussie dollar versus Japanese yen. In my opinion, the Aussie dollar is going to get stronger. So it looks like a good buy on the Aussie dollar versus the Japanese yen. And then you've got the dollar based majors. Now, the moment the dollar is likely to go higher over the next few weeks, purely based on no one knows where interest rates or how high they're going to go over the next seven to eight months. In my opinion, I think you talk about in the States of interest rates anywhere between four and a half and five percent. That will make the, that will make the US dollar extremely or the greenback as it's called extremely popular and extremely attractive because people then investors would then get four to five percent interest on their bank accounts in the US so you're going to get a good interest rate on your greenback the other area to look at is the UK as far as the UK is concerned the GBP I think it's oversold at the moment it looks very very weak it looks like a good opportunity to get in GBP versus Euro, GBP versus Yen, GBP versus even Aussie dollar, because I reckon the interest rates in the UK are going to go to anywhere between four and a half, four and a half and five percent this year. The, the central banks are well behind the curve. They've taken action far too lately, far too late. Sorry, repeat, repeat, just rephrase that. They've taken action far too late lately in the inflation fight. Inflation is roaring, soaring at all levels where even the central bankers or even the, the head, the presidents of the feds like James Bullard said that the fed is well behind the curve and needs to raise interest rates by 0.50%. Then you've got yesterday, the Bank of America on Friday came out and said that the, the US is going into recession. That followed on from Deutsche Bank, which also said that the US is going into recession. It's got two major Wall Street banks now calling the US going into recession. So be aware of that. If we go into recession, you're going to have the NASDAQ hammered. Where is that going to leave cryptos? Well, cryptos is a highly speculative stock. And therefore, if you're going to, uh, asset, sorry, and if you're going to trade it, then you've got to trade it on a swing trade at the moment. However, if the US or the economies, developed economies go into recession because of the geopolitical situation and because of inflation and because of overall growth concerns, then you're going to have the NASDAQ 
and cryptos going down significantly purely because they are highly speculative stocks and therefore money will be taken out of those by investors and put into more solid investments that will return safe returns on those particular asset classes. Look at the 10-year bond. The 10-year bond on Friday closed at 2.71%. That is the highest it's been in over three years, approaching four years. If it starts to go any higher, then you're going to have a big leakage in the stock market because price of bonds means that interest rates are going up and it's a big has a big impact on share value. Investors don't like um, high interest rates and don't like high yields on the bonds. But that's what's happening. The bond yields are going up. The price is going down. Why is the price going down? To make it more competitive with bank with bank accounts and savings accounts. Keep an eye on that. Very, very important. Shares in Amazon, Google, Salesforce all dropped on Friday. Tesla dropped on Friday. HP dropped on Friday. The big two, the two big names that got involved last week, which shunted the market upwards, was Tesla. Elon Musk bought 9.2% on Twitter. And Warren Buffett of Berkshire Hathaway Trust went and bought 11.4% in HP, the printer and the PC market, PC maker. And therefore, you're going to have more action in this particular market, especially if shares come down. You'll have the big boys coming in and taking stakes in those particular companies. I personally think that Twitter will now become the leading social media platform amongst all of them, simply because Elon Musk I'm a big fan of is dynamic and a driver. That's all for now. You can contact me on LinkedIn, on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on you see me on YouTube. This is May Valensky with Driving Markets. Have a good day.